Just one look, and I feel so high. Hello, and thank you for joining us today for a Friday Live Microsoft Edition. I hope everyone has had a great and wonderful day uh, working with students or whatever positions that you're in. We surely hope that you had an exciting, wonderful day uh, because for us, I'm excited to be coming to you, showing you some things as it deals with one note. Uh, I believe many of us have joined that we've been doing Friday Live for a few months now, and uh, I believe that many of you have joined us because one note is a thing that you love and enjoy. I know when I when one note first came out, I was I was hooked then, and to see where it has gone and grown and come from, I am excited to show you some features that Microsoft has to offer. And so as we dive into our session today, um, I would like for you, if you have pen and paper uh, around you or you have your cell phone because you're not connected to it, you're on your computer, get ready to take a few snapshots or a few pictures, or you can just sit back and then just play along with us and work along with us because after this, I will be sending you a follow-up email because it is our promise that as you join us today, you will receive one hour of PD credit, uh, continue professional uh, education credit. So 
I will be sending that to you uh, by the end of today, um, and it will have a certificate in it for you for you joining this session. And it would also have some resources that I'm going to give for you to show some fried love. I'm going to give you uh, where you can continue to use for yourself or your colleagues. But don't forget, we are fried tech. So any conference uh, that you may have coming up or any learning days uh, for teachers that you may have going on at your school, uh, your district, think about fried, fried technology. We can come to you in person or we can do a virtual webinar, a live webinar, synchronous webinar, or you can join sessions in our fried online school. So thank you so much. And without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, and if you can locate the chat, the chat bubble, and let us know who you are, where you are connecting from, and we can proceed after that. Locate the chat bubble and let us know where you are, where you're connecting from. Uh, maybe, maybe what do you teach? What school district? What do you teach? What position you have? Uh, can you put that into the chat for us, please? I see my Houston friends. A Leaf friends, you may have seen us at TCEA if you were there or at FETC. Uh, if you were there, thank you for stopping by and participating in one of our sessions. See, so I have some math teachers. Thank you, Techie Mom from SciFair. My SciFair friends are here. OK, many may be asking, well, who is this guy on the other side of the screen? Well, I am Stephen Stone for Fried Tech. I am the director of Microsoft Partnership and Training. Uh, I've held this position uh, going on three years now, uh, which I love what I do, uh, showing the love and what Microsoft has to offer. Uh, many people know Fried as a just simple Google partner, but we do more things than just that. And, and one of those other things is Microsoft. And we're seeking to grow with things, seeking to show you some new things after coming out of a session today, the reimagine um, Academy that Microsoft had today. There are some new things that are coming to education. And OneNote has some of those new things. So I cannot wait to show you those things. But you can see just a, a, a tidbit of who I am on the screen. And I don't pretty much like to boast and to tout. Uh, everything that I can do, but uh, you can see I am a public school ed, um, educator and administrator, um, and I'm a Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert. So if you want to know about that, you can contact me, hit me up, and I can tell you how to become um, an expert. Uh, it's an elite group of educators who seek to come together to, to communicate and to lean on each other. Not only that, I'm a Microsoft certified educator. So that is a badge all within itself. And it's not, I don't want to just call it a badge, but it's a process you would have to go through, take an exam and assessment. And if you pass that assessment, then you become what Microsoft calls a Microsoft certified educator. So these are not things that I'm just throwing up uh, just to say, hey, this is who I am, but it's some hard work that went into all of this. And I want everyone who is connected to, if you would, go down that same path and you will see how your mind would just expand and grow and you uh, will level up for your students. Who are we? Once again, we are Fried Tech. So if you're not following us on our socials, we would ask that you do so. And more than likely, you will find us on the Fried Technology. We went through a little bit of a name change to shorten it up uh, within the past year or so, trying to be still still be hip and cool, right? Uh, to shorten everything up to say Fried Tech. Um, 
but you can find us on socials. So you're probably following us already on Facebook, and that's how you receive the alert today that we are doing this particular session, uh, our Friday Live session. And I'll tell you more about what Friday Live is in just a minute. If you're not following Microsoft on its socials, you may want to do so to come to discover the new things that we have coming up and how uh, we're seeking to use such tools and such learnings uh, to bring to you today. And if you want to stay in the know and stay in the loop, you may want to follow Microsoft socials. So they're everywhere. They're everywhere. And so you want to be everywhere where Microsoft is to know what's happening and what's going on so you can follow their socials. OK, we give you a little bit for people to get that started. OK, and working with Microsoft today, we will be talking about OneNote and you join to see the session description that was out there. And we're talking about how OneNote can come to help educators. OneNote is just not a digital notebook. It's more than that. You can start off and scratching the surface as it deals with OneNote, but uh, it's more than that. So I will want you to locate the chat once again and let me know whether one, you're new to OneNote, two, you have some experience with OneNote. Again, number one, you can play, place it in the chat. One, I'm new to OneNote. I have no experience with OneNote, but I want to learn how. And two, I do have at least some experience working with OneNote. Let's put that in the chat. <laughs> yes, you can put a four. If you that experience, you can go above and exceed as well. All right, so I see mainly we have uh, fairly um, halfway across the board with uh, the participants who are connected ones and twosies. If you are one, I know your mind is about to be blown. If you are two or above a two as well, your mind is about to be blown. You probably say, I didn't even know that can do that. So before we start off, without further ado, we're going to explore this video. Awesome. Thank you for asking. I was wondering uh, if the sound was going through. Sometimes uh, our sound is affected, but I'll restart the video here. And here we go. So you should have sound. Let's see. All right, let's see. So let me know if you hear the sound, please. Awesome. Whoa, where'd you get that? I can travel. 
have almost anything in my Trapper Keeper. One, two, three, four. Oh, snap! Trapper Keeper Snap. Plus, the new Snapper Trapper easily snaps in and out of three ring binders for quick and easy organization. It's so strong that you can trap almost anything in your Trapper Keeper. Okay, who remember a Trapper Keeper back in the day? Is there anybody who had a Trapper Keeper? <laughs> Someone said I had one of those. And so, uh, yes, yes. And so when I was thinking about OneNote and how I can make it be visible, OneNote is very similar to that of a Trapper Keeper. So you can have sections, you can have pages, and what, what section dividers and pages, right? Um, and so within OneNote, it, it could just go on your mobile device, on your phones and tablets and Chromebooks, Windows, uh, MacBooks. It could go anywhere. You just have to know how to access it and make sure everything is speaking and talking to one another. So it's more than just a digital notebook for you to type, for you to uh, put Printouts for you to attach files uh, like pull out a drum kit so you can put in videos you can put in audio files and keep everything all in one place and if you're sharing with other colleagues uh, you're using one note staff notebook or you're sharing it with your teams I can say one note can be a portal to facilitate learning um, it could be a breakout. You can create a breakout OneNote. So many different things that you can do with OneNote, but we won't touch on everything today. But if you want to touch upon those things that I mentioned, then you can send us an email or send me steven.stone um, at fried technology, or I can shorten up my email as well. So if you seek to want to know more and what we can offer you and to come to your uh, school and do, which that wasn't right because I'm trying to type and talk at the same time, which we can come to your school and do, and you can send me an email and then we can work this out for you. We don't want to play that again. So what is OneNote? As we said, OneNote could be that binder that digital binder. And oftentimes, some people get it confused, OneNote versus OneDrive. And so I thought I would just make this little visual to you to say OneNote is the binder and OneDrive is the bookshelf. So if you have binders on the bookshelf, think about OneNote as that and OneDrive at my storing location. And where can I get to OneDrive from to be able to access OneNote in a sense? You can go to office.com. And then so if you're using Microsoft 365 and you go to office.com, you can log in with your district email address and password and your students can do the same to access OneNote through OneDrive or you can simply click on the apps grid, click on OneNote and OneNote will be there. But the storage location is the bookshelf, which is OneDrive. If we want to get kind of technical with it, we can say SharePoint, but we don't want to get that techie with it uh, to show you where it is. I like to say that OneNote is free. So even if you don't, even if your school doesn't have a Microsoft account or you don't have Microsoft 365, you can still use a personal version of OneNote, still download the app. You just have to create a Microsoft account and it will allow you to use OneNote for free. So you can use it beyond just in the educational aspect, which I do as well. I use it for personal use, so you don't have to even pay for Microsoft uh, to even get a subscription to OneNote. It's free to everyone everywhere, and you can simply go to www.onenote.com or simply onenote.com. We'll just take a few letters off. OneNote.com, create you a Microsoft account, and then you just sync it. Uh, and then everything should be OK. Also, where you can then download the OneNote application and use it on your desktop computer, uh, Mac or uh, Windows device. So since we've gotten those things out of the way, here are two things that I want to touch on today. And we may have time to cross over to the desktop version of OneNote, uh, but to level set everyone, I will be start working with the online version of OneNote.
and here are a few features that I would like to touch on. Uh, let me go into my online portal. And we will be showing this. And so right now you should be seeing my other screen, which has two versions of OneNote open. And with the two versions of OneNote being open, one thing you would see, um, I need to end this presentation so I can see what you guys are saying if you have any questions. There we go. So if you have any questions in the chat, you can feel free to ask your questions or you can um, wait for a minute <laughs> for me to catch it, to see it. But I do see, I just glanced over here. Someone said our phone. Yes, you can put the OneNote app on your phone, but just make sure if you want those, and I was gonna touch on that, make sure if you want them to sync, that you're using that same account, that OneNote account that you use to create. So if it's your school account, make sure in the app you use your school account. And then also in the app, you can have multiple accounts there because I have notebooks in multiple accounts. And the one that I want to touch on right now will be uh, the desktop version of, not the desktop, the online version of OneNote. And I'll jump to the desktop a little bit later. So you would see that those who are fairly new and never used OneNote before, if you look over here uh, to the right, the left side of my screen, and I'm zooming in so you can see this, <clears throat> the left side of my screen, you would see that these are my sections, okay? And under my sections or to the right of my sections are the pages that go along with those sections. And this is a notebook that I will be sharing with you as a resource. Uh, it's OneNote, a toolkit for teachers. And so if you wanted to share this with your colleagues or you wanted to glean and to learn more, you can do that as well and just pass it along and your teachers can also learn and follow up with you. And in this notebook, it has many hyperlinks that are in here where you can do some asynchronous learning. Uh, and then come to be a OneNote whiz. And so uh, it's a lot of things in here and by OneNote progressing up is some old images that are in here, but it still follows along the same path. So we will look at these are sections here to my left and then to the right of that are your pages. OK, and then center where you see me over here, here is your active space. So here is what is on those particular pages. So um, you can zoom in and out, pinch and zoom. I call this like a never ending canvas because even though you're seeing this and what you're seeing on the screen, I can zoom out and there's more space over here that I can then type something if I wanted to. And it's probably small on your screen, but if I go to that space, and then increase on that space where I was typing, then I can see my notes. I can zoom in and the student can work anywhere. You can put anything anywhere. It's not so much as a uh, vertical, well, yeah, ver vertical typing system as a word processor, but you can just click on anywhere and then get your boxes in such a way where it just creates your own typing field. So if I wanna type underneath here, I can do whatever I want to do. This is just the surface level of what I'm showing you, but OneNote can do so much more than that. So if you wanted to access OneNote, let me back up one step, because you may say, Stephen, you spoke it, but I'm new to OneNote, so I don't know how to even get to it. Well, once again, the link is office.com. and working in office.com. Remember I said you can click on your apps grid and OneNote would be here, or it may be already as a shortcut on your list of apps there to the left and OneNote can open up. And remember I also said that uh, you can go into OneDrive and once you go into OneDrive, you can see your recent notebooks 
but if you click on your files, sometimes it does make a folder for your notebooks. And sometimes they're just hanging out, so you just have to know where they are and where you're getting them from. But most of the time when you create a notebook, it does automatically create a folder on the first time and it stores all of your notebooks in one place. If you are teaching a class. It may end up making a folder that says class notebooks and it will delineate your class notebooks just from your regular notebooks and it would also make a staff notebook folder as well. So then you can know um, what's different. So I have yet to create a staff notebook. So that's why you don't see a staff notebook in my folder in OneDrive. Um, a staff notebooks folder, so it will separate those notebooks. So regular notebooks are just personal notebooks that I'm creating to take notes for different things. Uh, if I choose to do that and in class notebooks, it creates a separate folder and staff. It does the same thing as well. So since we are in here in this notebook here, did you know that uh, those who are new to OneNote, I'm using OneNote online, remember? Um, I'm level level setting everyone. So when I click on view, here is immersive reader. So it does have this ELA component tied to it as well, where it cleans it up. And if you have not experienced uh, OneNote or immersive reader within OneNote and your kids are not using it, I believe they're being uh, 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 not really using the tool to its full capability. And what we learned today that I did see this in Word, but reading coach and reading progress is now inside of Immersive Reader is not fully in the integration in OneNote as of yet, but it is coming. So if you have yet to experience it, uh, you can click on this play button. And if you don't hear the reading, it is reading to the students and is pointing it out Word word for word. Uh, it also has text size, increased spacing. So you see as I'm making the changes, the changes are happening automatically. As automatic as automatic could be, right? It could also do syllables. So this is uh, what Microsoft is pretty much writing on and it also labels uh, the words in its vocabulary, right? So grammar. Not only that, but clicking on the book, you can have line focus. So as it is reading, uh, students can have line focus there. There is a picture dictionary. I'm gonna turn my syllables off. There's a picture dictionary. So know that the picture dictionary is not available for every word, but it's there for the words <laughs> that I guess Microsoft deemed to be the most important to want to know. So not only that, uh, you would see that in that word, if you have uh, ELLs or you have students who are uh, trying to learn a second language, you can also have them to know what the word is, and it would also have that word that's being translated. I can translate not only the word, but the document as well. And within there, you can go directly into the original or to Spanish. So I'm clicked on the original, I click on Spanish and it changes it. So if you have not yet or your students have not used this, you may want to dive into it and then also move your students to use this feature as well inside of OneNote. And to get out of here, I just click on the back button and it takes me right directly to my document. And you would notice that it took all the graphics away. It was looking at this page and it took away all the graphics so the students can really just focus on the, the words because because we would understand that sometimes some students get distracted just by seeing this. So that was just one thing I wanted to show you here. One of one of the things uh, is immersive reader that also have math support. So if if you are looking to use. Uh, let me do a new page here. And on my pages, I'm going to add new and I get a blank page. If you are looking for one note to be used in the math classroom, you can still use it uh, that way. 
your students could either type out the math problem or they can draw out the math problem and then it will give it will walk the students through solving that math problem. Um, and the, here's what we call math assistant. So it's telling me what to do. I can either write the problem or type out the problem and then select it. So I'm gonna just keep it simple here and say that is it. I'm just doing two plus two. And then I can select my math problem. OK, and then I can click on the math and you see it changed it into an equation and it's asking me my action. I'm going to tell it to evaluate or I can factor around floor ceiling. All of these choices I can do based on how the students are using it right here. Yes, it did give the student the answer and I would say some teachers would say, well, is that cheating? I wouldn't say it's cheating. It's remediation. It's 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 a tutor without you being a, being there to tutor them because how many times do you get teacher, 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 teacher uh, while you're seeking to work on other things and then if they didn't know it, it will then show them the steps. And you can just walk your students to show how they would get the answer. Here's immersive reader and it will read it to them step by step. I just did a simple problem, but it could even go and do those more com complex problems. Trigonometry, trigonometry, right? No, um, calculus, um, algebra, pre-algebra. Uh, it can go into all those things and uh, it can also generate a quiz. So if you are working with students and is asking me to sign in, it can create a math quiz for me, for me to go right off and take, and you see it's creating the quiz. There it goes. How many questions do I want? Generate quiz. So I don't have to have, I'm not even in OneNote class notebook yet. I'm just in my regular, private notebook. So if a student want to go and then to generate a math quiz for them, I know what three plus five is. Uh, I know it's eight, but I'm just going to select the wrong answer on some of them so you can see what it is. And so it says completed view results. So then it comes back and let the kids know how they did on their quiz. Now it doesn't give them why is the right answer, why is the wrong answer, but they can go and go do another quiz and start all over again to kind of see the match up what the right answer is and take their time so uh, they can write out another math problem and generate another quiz. How many of you have used Math Assistant inside of OneNote? Or if you have not, let us know. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, I have some colleagues from Cypher and I know I touched them on this uh, before I left and we dived into this and they're great OneNote users. And so you can tag someone in Cypher as another teacher educator uh, and they can speak you through their process. But you can call Fried as well, uh, not pushing it off of us and we can show you. I'm just showing you a few things that you can do inside of OneNote. I like to say that in OneNote, you see that I'm clicked on the insert ribbon. And I like to say that OneNote on the insert ribbon is where the party lives. So I'm on my demo page. Remember I said you can click anywhere and add in things. So this is where the party lives. So I can insert a table if I wanted to. I can do from a file. So I can uh, do a printout or do pictures from a file here. Uh, let me see. I want to do this emoji. Just trying to just be funny here. So I can pull in something a more edu educational here. So it could be a graphic that I'm bringing in for my students. Insert where the party lives from a camera. Okay, my camera's already in use. I'm using it with you guys, but I'm gonna turn it off just for a second.
Okay. And why is this so important is with students, they can take pictures of their work. So I know I use my computer to take a picture, but what if they had one note on their mobile devices? If they had one note on their tablets, they can also take pictures of their learning to prove their learning and what they are learning. Uh, another thing with insert, you can get in uh, images or different things from an online file. You can print out online only though, you can print out an insert of PDF printout or do an insert of any file attachment. So a file attachment could be an MP3 for sound file or a video file. If you had any office add-ons, uh, you can do that. Uh, if you like to record, if you wanna do some audio recording, watch this. This is major. So if your students have the devices in class, it's major, but it's danger, it's strange. If you allow them to, if they know that this exists, they can do live recording, audio recording right there in the classroom while they're there and the system will pick it up as they are recording right away and then they can go and take notes with what they are doing and as they are taking their notes and generating some type of audio response, what's going to happen is when they go back and click on some items after it has played, it will jump to where that recording is uh, and then play five seconds before and do that. So students no longer have to say, I'm in the room, but I have no recording and I, I can't keep up with what the teacher is saying. So I'm gonna click stop recording here. And when I stop recording, here is my audio file. And I can play this audio file back. And it will play that sound back for their student and it saves that sound bite or that sound recording there, right there for the student. If they was using the desktop version, they can then go and click on this area where they started typing and it will start the audio five seconds before where they were to pick up like what was being said when i typed that note so they can do that there is there is someone online um ryan who's joined us uh she does sketch noting so within meetings you can take out your a uh, stylus, especially if you have a touchscreen device, you can take out your stylus and you can start doing sketch notings. So when you deal with sketch notes, and I did have an example of someone who's using sketch notes, uh, so it may be a little bit blurry on your side, but uh, this is what we're talking about with sketch notes. So they can be right here within the notebook and then actually be sketching out what they're seeing, what they're hearing at that time. How, uh, what was their mind thinking about when they did those, pretty much those sketch. So sketch notes uh, can be used in anything from in the classroom to adult meetings. So if you know about sketch notings, what you can do is click on insert, when, sorry, draw, and you have your stylus and you can draw right on the screen. Choose your color. Sometimes we think students are playing, but sketch notings is one thing that they can do inside of one note as well. And then you see also on my page, I have my math. So I did switch to another notebook, but I just wanted to let you know that, that they can do that. Okay. So not only just the other things that I'm showing you, it's like already mind blown things are going forward if you had a youtube video you can also insert a youtube video now please watch the video before you insert a video uh for your students so since this guy came right up So I can take this YouTube video and I'm in my class notebook at my at this time. I'm going to go to my teacher content library and I'm going to add in a page and I can insert this link for my students and right there it populates the YouTube video for my students. So if I'm using class notebook or any notebook for that matter, but I did put it in my class notebook 
So then my class can go here, students can go here into the content library that I label as, let's say we're talking about tech tools in the classroom. So they can go there and we're learning about that and then they can see that YouTube video. Remember I talked about uh, insert is where the party lives. So if there was a PDF that I wanted to print out, which there is a PDF that I'm going to find that I do want to share with you guys at the end of this. And I think it is already open here. And I want to say this. And when I save this particular PDF file, uh, get back on it. When I save this particular PDF, it's going to allow me, uh, let's just go to my computer, that's fine. It's going to allow me to bring that PDF in. Now this is using Word on line, well not Word, OneNote online. So in using OneNote online, you can only bring in PDFs. You can only bring in PDFs. So it's asking me, uh-oh. My computer didn't like what I just did. It didn't like what I just did, ladies lady and gentlemen. It's not liking me. Uh oh, let me stop sharing here. And you all can still see me, right? Okay, yes, all right. Okay, there we go, good, good, all right. All right, so now we let me go back in and share this with you real quick. All right, so I'm back. Sorry about that glitchy there. Um, I had to save the file, so now let's say, okay, insert PDF. And I'm going to go to my desktop. That's where I save the PDF. And here's this PDF being printed out right here. Now it is going to come in as multiple pages because it is a multi page document and um, it's just an image file. So although there are hyperlinks here, I can't click that image file, but I can still open up this file. If you allow your students to have the companion, to have the shortcut, then they can open up that file on their desktop on their computer, on their phones, on whatever device they're using, they can open up this file and then click on the live links. Uh, PDF for students, we know PDFs can be edited, but uh, not many people know that to even go try to even edit a PDF. Uh, but they can then open up this, download it, use it, and then make the linkables, uh, use the links there. So uh, I will be sharing this document with you. So just to know that all of this is at their fingertips. So I brought in a document. If Even if I wanted to attach a file, um, you saw that particular file attachment. So I can go and attach any file. Let me just find a video here. Um, I can attach in any file. Come on. And what those files would allow me to do, let's say that it's this file here. This is just a regular file attachment. So with this file attachment, 
uh, students can double click it to then to see the file, to see the image, but online it makes them download it. So if you're working on like Google Chromebooks, think about where your students are working, the platforms that they're using, and you don't want them to use up a whole lot of space downloading things. So you may want to save them time, save yourself time by not putting a lot of file attachments in, but at least I wanted to show you that that's available because sometimes these printouts uh, don't come out in a sense because there's too large of a file uh, for it to come out or it may come out on multiple pages. So you want to be mindful of that. Before we switch over to the desktop version, I do want to show you this. This feature is available that you may not know. So uh, it could be in your class notebook. It could be in a regular OneNote notebook, but OneNote could also be connected to um, Microsoft Translator. So when I go and click on my view tab and click on closed captions, that's becoming a big thing inside of education accessibility. So if you want a transcript of what you're talking about, you could then go to Microsoft Translator online. And what's so great about this is you can use a Microsoft account or a Google account to sign into Microsoft Translator. And it looks like I'm already in. Well, nope, it says join a conversation right off. So I can use Microsoft or Google to get in. And I'm just going to click on Microsoft because that's the account I have in it. Uh, there we go. So it automatically found me and it let me in. And it told me to start conversation. So the moment I start my conversation, I'm going to turn my microphone on and mute others and click OK. So uh, the students can either scan this QR code for their devices to see the conversation, or I can share this code with my students and they can go back inside of OneNote, put in that code there and click join. And once they click join, you do see on the left side on the right side rather on my screen there is a transcript right there that's that's going on and students can then look at this transcript go through this transcript and they can click pause on the transcript if they choose they can then thereby go and highlight maybe it was on the word of mute they want to highlight the word mute. They want to go and highlight some other areas that stuck out to them. They can do that and then they can resume. Oftentimes when they click resume, the text will continue to go forth. So in the text moving forward, what's going to end up happening is the text will continue to go on and they can pick it up. So you can see that as the host, I am talking and everything is still going on on this side in my translator app. And then for the students, you see where it picked up right here. So it's still going, it's still doing what it's supposed to do, and it has picked up. Now you may say, Stephen, that's a cool idea, but what happens if I end the session? If I end the session, it would automatically create a tab called transcribe. And it would, uh, well, I say a section tab, it will create a section called transcribe and it will label the page as today's date. So many of you may not have noticed that this even existed online, but start using Microsoft Translator app with your students uh, because students may need a transcript if they on IEP 504 programs, uh, they may need a transcript uh, to everything that is being stated. So you can easily do that in Microsoft. So I'm going to go ahead and end, end the session, log out of it. So now that session has ended. And when it knows this session has ended, it will create a new section, transcribe, just give it a minute. It will create a new section and a page that's labeled as today's date. If you want to see what that looks like, I'm going to go back to my teacher notebook because I've done this session many of times and here's what the transcript will look like based on my highlights. It will come over and then automatically bring in that transcript. Now that should help students like right off. 
Uh, we should have been started flipping over chairs or whatever. And this is not everything OneNote can do. We can come to you and do a more in-depth training on OneNote and what OneNote has to offer. So this was OneNote online. We have a few minutes left, and I want to jump to OneNote on the desktop. Because as it is with Microsoft, if you are an advanced user and like the bells and whistles, the full bells and whistles uh, using the Microsoft tools, you can then do that by using the desktop version. And I want to just transition over to where, remember I talked about the transcripts? Well, in the desktop version, if you have Windows devices on your campus and your students are using Windows devices, um, they can have this feature available to them. If you're using a Windows device, this feature can be available to you. So instead of using uh, the closed caption feature under view, and then I go click on CC because that's an online thing, on the desktop area is a tool called Transcribe. Transcribe started off in Microsoft Word. And if you never used Transcribe before, Transcribe will allow you to upload a video or an audio file and it will transcribe it for you. It will pull the text from that file and allow you to place it into a document. Or you can simply go into a meeting, bring in your laptop. If your laptop has an excellent microphone, you can click on start recording and right away it will start recording what is being spoken, what is being said. So it can make a transcript of the entire conversation. It doesn't matter if it was two people, three people, four people, five people talking, having a conversation, uh, Microsoft OneNote or Transcribe is smart enough to identify um, the frequency in each voice. Each person's voice will be delineated and it will say speaker one, speaker two, speaker three, speaker four, four speaker five. So when I do, okay, I'm ready to stop now. I just click on the microphone, save and transcribe now. And based on the length of, you, of what you want to be transcribed, we'll determine how long it would take to do that transcription. So now you see what I have done. It automatically pastes the audio file here, letting me know that that was a transcription there. And then you can see over here on the side, here's a complete transcript of what I did. Okay, Stephen Stone. And I can say everyone where you everywhere you see speaker one, put speaker one's name. Before I click the check, I can go in here and I can listen to the audio because we know sometimes when we speak, there may be a dialect or we may not uh, pronounce our words correctly or accurate and it may pick up something else. So you want to make sure that you go and edit this file if you really need to edit it uh, to share with other people. So you want to do that as well. So I'm just going to bring in everything over into my OneNote where then now you can see the transcript all in itself right there. So uh, that can help us out. Uh, I didn't do my checkbox, so it didn't change everything. So that can help us out there. Let me delete here and then do it again based on my changes. So it changed Stephen Stone, Stephen Stone. So you make 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 sure you update that person um, before you do that if you choose to do it. So that's a desktop feature. Um, that so if OneNote, if you are using OneNote desktop and you don't have that feature just yet, it may be your district is what we call throt throttling the updates. So you may want to get with your district to push the latest updates. Uh, it may be uh, you're using an older version of OneNote that you, whereby you need to go and get the updated version of OneNote. And remember, we said it's free, so you don't have to worry about, hey, I got to pay for an update. Uh, we want you to have the latest and greatest uh, things there. And multiple things where I showed you online insert. Uh, is where the party lives. So uh, when you're using the desktop version, if I wasn't using my camera here, let me turn it off. And not only can I just record audio online, but what I can do within OneNote, if I use OneNote desktop, I can record a video for my students right using OneNote desktop version, and it would automatically sync online. So I'll show you where that is. I'll go back and show you to where everything is syncing. Everything I'm doing is syncing. I'm going to click stop. I'm going to turn back on my camera. And using my camera uh, is back on, but then you can see here is that video file that I just created. 
Okay. Can do within OneNote. If I use OneNote Desktop, I all right. So um, everyone can see the question. Am I using OneNote Windows 11? I am on a Windows 11 machine, and I am using uh, the latest version of Office 365. Uh, I should have said this disclaimer that I am a member of the Microsoft Insider Group, so I do get updates before everyone. Um, so know that this is a feature that will be coming out. Video should already be there, but transcribe is something that they're starting to roll out and release. So if you don't have the transcribe button just yet, just keep waiting, keep holding on. Uh, they rolled it out to the insiders first to test it out, to look at it, but it should be rolling out in the next couple of months across all of the OneNote platforms. But I am on Windows 11 and I have the latest uh, Microsoft 365 package installed. Thanks for asking. OK, and so with inside of OneNote, here is something that you can't do uh, online. You can only do this on the desktop version, but if you do it on a desktop version, it will carry over online. So uh, I would say anybody once again with the Microsoft products, if you want the full bells and whistles, make it be what you want it to be. You want to get uh, familiar with the desktop versions and the online versions, uh, but they are trying to make the desktop version look very similar to the online version. So you notice on the online version, all of my sections uh, was on the left side and my pages on the left side. In the recent version of OneNote desktop, it may look like this and it may be where techie mom, Tamara Ferguson from Cypher is asking about Hey, how did you get your stuff to look like that? Well, that's another update that Microsoft has done. So if you're using the desktop version of OneNote, you may have seen it look like this. With all of your notebooks on the side and then all of your sections and uh, tabs and dividers on the top and then your pages are over here to uh, the right side of your screen. But here's a new additive for the desktop version. You can say, I don't want those. I want everything to look like the desktop version. So you can also change your view on the desktop version. You can also in the desktop version change um, because this this white, to be honest with you, is killing me, is hurting my eyes. I can change my background to say, well, this is the way I see it, but when it goes out to other people, they're going to have their own settings that they're going to be able to do. So you see, I've added these things here. Let's go back online. So if you're not thinking that, uh, wait a minute, he's not being honest with us. He's doing all of those things, but is it really syncing on online? Yes, here is that recording right here. OK, even if I put it up on my phone, it will be syncing on my phone, which I do have that notebook on my phone and has automatically synced on my phone. I'm going to take a picture of that. Take a picture of my phone screen and then what I'm going to do is. On the bottom of this, I'm going to say put my picture. Right there at the bottom of here. So you can see I'm taking a screenshot on my phone and I'm saying, OK, put that in there. And I am done. So now you see within a few seconds, there is that picture right from my phone. So I can add in things. And you say, Stephen, is it syncing back to the desktop? Let me go back and open up the desktop. There it is right there from my phone. And so knowing you can use many devices, if you have that OneNote notebook opened up and it will sync across sync across devices. So I have just really just brushed the surface uh, with you on what OneNote can do. And with that in mind, I want to give you some things that when we are over with this, I'm going to give you some things to know that uh, you can use OneNote yourself. 
You don't have to wait on anyone else to come and train you. I'm going to give you some products and different things that you can use to also use OneNote in your current roles or positions. And we're pretty much about out of time. I'm going to in this and share my screen where we can do the close out. And like I said, I know I just scratched the surface with you, but uh, OneNote has so much where, um, like we tell the students, if you really want to learn what something can do, just go try it. Go play with it. You won't break it. If you have any questions, uh, you can still reach out to Stephen at fried.tech, and uh, we will connect with you uh, and give you everything you need. So know this. There are other notebooks. There's the OneNote mobile app. There's OneNote staff notebook. That's, that's found in Microsoft 365 and Teams. There's OneNote class notebook that's found in Microsoft 365 and Teams. And I'm saying in Microsoft 3, 365 and Teams for both of these because we do know that there are some districts that they have access to Teams, but they're prevented from using Teams. But you can go into your Microsoft account online, office.com, and you can create a staff notebook and a class notebook, and you can use that right off without having to dive into Teams. But only OneNote PLC notebooks are only found inside of Microsoft Teams. We have some upcoming sessions, which I will send this to you in an email, uh, Flip Out with Flip and Digital Storytelling with Microsoft Sway that is coming up in March and April. And if you would like to get the redemption code, which I would also send this to you in an email, uh, you can get this link and the code uh, where you could gain credit in the Microsoft Learn environment. Okay. And I have some resources like these right now on my screen are hyperlinked. So I have some resources that I would like to share with you uh, that you can go and start learning right now today. And I will send that in an email shortly uh, before the night is out. All right. We love to hear your feedback. So if you uh, want to do fry.tech slash eval, we are listening and how we can make presentations better. I know that this is only a one hour, so we couldn't get in and really dive in and play like we wanted to. But you can always reach out to us. Excuse me. And we'll be more than happy to go over some things with you and to also come to any other conference uh, that you are at. So thank you so, so much for joining us. Please be looking out for that email. I see a question came through. Staff notebooks have disappeared, disappeared from our dashboard. So let me show you if it's disappeared, you may have to go and find it. So since that question came up, let me help you locate it. Click on your apps grid. And you may have to go down where it says all apps. And maybe scroll there in that list and see if you see staff notebook uh, there. It should be in all the apps. If you see class notebook, you definitely should see staff notebooks in your list. So go to office.com. Click on your apps grid. Make sure you sign in with your um, um, work or school account and go down to the bottom of your apps list. Click on all apps and it should be in that list. It's alphabetized staff notebook. Did you see it there, Techie Mom? And if we need to dive into it more, um, OK, awesome. And I know I need to reach out some people. Miss Brittany, I thought Miss Brittany was on, but if we need to reach out to you more after this session. We will do so. So thank you so much for joining us. Please be looking out for an email to come to you within the next hour or so. All right. You all have a great day and thank you for joining us.